first commercially launched spacecraft is set to land near the south pole of the moon today. Isn't that cool? Isn't that cool? It just I makes know, me I smile. Love it. Yeah, the lander is carrying six NASA science and technology instruments that will pave the way for future exploration of the moon under NASA's Artemis campaign. And the mission will be the first U.S. mission to land on the moon since NASA's Apollo 17 crew back in 1972, a long time ago. Joining us this morning is Chris Colbert, the project manager for Commercial Lunar Payload Services, or CLPS. Chris, good morning to you. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Nice to have you with us. So tell us about this lunar delivery to ferry cargo to the moon, and what are some of the, what are some of the goals here? So part of what we're trying to do here is uh, establish a new way of getting to the moon. Rather than the government building a lander and managing the whole project, we're partnering with commercial industry to let them build a lander and deliver our payloads to the moon. This is a new approach that we hope will give us both lower costs and open up the beginnings of a lunar economy, allowing commercial companies to make money by going to the moon on their own. So let's talk more about that, Chris. We mentioned before of a lunar delivery includes six science and technology instruments for NASA. How are these types of deliveries going to help pave the way for future exploration of the moon? So when we go back to the moon on the Artemis program, we'll be going to the South Pole. That's not where we've had humans ever before. In the Apollo missions, we're in different parts of the moon. So we are sending instruments on this mission and some future Eclipse missions to help us learn more about the environment that humans will eventually live and work in. So for example, we have a radiation sensor on this mission that will help us understand more about the radiation environment at the South Pole. We're also having instruments that help us measure the dust and how dust behaves at the South Pole. All of these things will help pave the way for humans to prepare for longer duration stays at the South Pole in the future. Talk to us a little bit more about uh, the South Pole region that you were just talking about. You know, why is this region of the moon have so much interest? Why focus on this particular area? Well, when you send humans to live and work long term, they, are, they require resources to be able to do that. One of the most important resources for humans is water. Um, because of the way the moon, the moon is a, a dry, dead planet. Um, but there is some evidence that we've learned over the last 15 to 20 years that there might be water bound in the soil at the poles. The poles have less sunlight on them, and there might be regions of the poles where we could find water embedded in the, in the, in the, in the regolith of the soil, if you will. Mm -hmm. So we're sending instruments there and eventually humans there because we might be able to take advantage of the resources that are available to us in that environment. Moon water. Oh my goodness. This is so cool, Chris. Okay, how can people watch the live stream? So we'll be broadcasting live this afternoon. You can go to NASA Plus or nasa.gov slash NASA TV. Uh, both of those will lead to the same place. We'll be showing the live broadcast of the landing. We won't be able to see the actual vehicle land because there's no cameras on the moon, hmm. but we'll have intrusive machines and NASA talking about what we see and we'll broadcast the first images if they're able to land successfully. What's the, what's the time frame? What time should people tune in? Um, right now we're hearing around, five, let's see, around 4 o'clock Eastern time, I think we're hearing. Okay. 4 to 4.30 Eastern time. So about 1 o'clock this afternoon Pacific time. Fascinating. All right. Very cool. Thank you so much for all the information. We're excited about this. Yeah. Thank you. We're looking forward to it. Nice to have you with us. Thank you very much, Chris. Isn't that cool? Yeah. I love that question about, you know, why this region? Yeah. You know, South Pole side of the moon, what's so special? And we think about it, you know, the moon, it's very dry. It's a very dry place. Mm -hmm. But like, I'm talking like I've been there. I just learned you? that from Chris. Oh, yeah. no. yeah, that, yeah, <laughs> I just learned about that. But to think that, oh, there could be water yeah. on that opposite side because it's not getting as much sun. Mm -hmm. So cool. I know. And to think about what we could potentially learn about, uh, you know, that space mm -hmm. and think about all the future exploration that we might see, too. It's fascinating. Love mm. it.